Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a mirror review. We're going to look at two equations. The first, 1 over f equals 1 over o plus 1 over i. We're going to see how to use that equation. Uh, f is the focal distance, o is the distance from the object to the mirror, and i is the distance from the image to the mirror. Uh, the next equation gives you the magnification m, how much bigger, how much smaller is the image with respect to the object. So we're going to see how to use both of these equations and apply them to concave and convex mirrors. I'll show you how to, what the difference is and how you use these equations in each case. So let's go and let's have some fun. All right, so here are the two cases I'm considering, a concave mirror and a convex. For the concave mirror, we've got a curved mirror. The shiny surface is on the inside here. It is characterized with a focal point F, a radius of curvature C. The distance from that focal point all the way to the mirror, we call that lowercase f. And then you typically place an object in front of the mirror. And that's going to be a certain distance O away from the mirror. For the convex case, again, we're going to place a, an object in front of the convex mirror. In this case, it's curved the other way, and the shiny surface is still on the left side here. Now, for convex mirrors, the focal point is behind the mirror. So that's a little bit different. And also the radius of curvature here. So for both mirrors, it's very important to know that the equations 1 over f equals 1 over o plus 1 over i can be applied to both mirrors. That's very important. And also our magnification equation can be applied to both mirrors. So typically now what we do is we want to use the first equation in order to find where is the image going to be produced by a concave mirror and by a convex mirror. So we would have to solve this equation to find what i is. And the other thing we want to know is we want to know whether the image is going to be bigger, whether it's going to be smaller, and we also know whether the image is going to be upright or is going to be inverted. And all of that is going to come from both of these equations. So let's have a look at some of the sign conventions now that get used for both of these equations. All right, when we apply these two equations, there are sign conventions. Since it's the same set of equations that describe two different mirrors, there have to be pluses and minuses or some differences whenever we substitute values into these equations. So the first thing to remember is that for both cases, I'm placing an object in the front. O is simply going to be a positive value. For both cases, O is always positive. That's very easy to remember. It's the same for both cases. Now, the other terms that come into these equations is this focal distance, F. For a concave mirror, f is always going to be a positive value. For a convex mirror, f is always going to be a negative value. All right, now we can substitute some values into the top equation. And what we can do is we can solve for what i is. So we're going to be stuck solving for i. And we're either going to find one of two things. We can find a positive value for the image when we solve these equations, or we may solve and obtain a negative value for i. If we get a positive value for i, this means that the image is in front of mirror. For example, it would be on this side to the left of this orange dashed line. Likewise for the convex mirror. Now, if we solve the equations and we get a negative value for the image when we solve equation one, that means that the image is behind the mirror. We'll look at an example in just a minute. So that's very important. Actually, whenever you solve the equations for the convex mirror, you're always going to obtain i to be a negative value. That's an exception. For the concave mirror, I could get both. I could get i as a positive value, and I could get i that's a negative value. You can actually get both solutions depending on where the object is. If the object is close to the mirror with respect to the focal distance, or if it's farther behind, you can get a different value for i. However, for the convex case, that's not the, that's not the case. Now, if the object is in front of the mirror, that means I could actually put a screen there and I could the, place that image on a screen. You can view it on a screen. We call these real images because there's actually light that will cross at those points. Now, 
If the image is behind the mirror, we call these virtual images. They're called virtual because although there's an image there, there's actually no light that actually crosses at those points because they're behind the mirror. It only seems as though light is coming from those points, but there is no light back there. So what does that mean? That means if I go now to my equation for M, I can only have certain values. For example, if I is positive and I substitute it into my equation over here, I'm going to get that M is going to be a negative value. If M is negative, this tells me that my image is inverted. So what does that mean? It means that all real images are going to be inverted. And the last case is if M is positive, I'm only going to get a positive value for M if I is negative because these two negatives are then going to cancel out. And in that case, I'm going to get an upright image. So that means right away that all virtual images, the ones that have a negative value for I, are always going to be upright. So those definitions are the same. So now let's have a look at a couple examples and see how we apply these equations to simple cases. All right, so here's problem one. I'm standing in front of a concave mirror just by the shape here. I'm standing three meters in front and the focal distance of that mirror is one meter. I have a height of approximately two meters. The questions are locate the image, number one, and describe it. Tell me, is it a real image, a virtual image? Is it upright, inverted, and how big is it? So let's have a look. So the first equation we use is, let's find the location of the image. One over F equals to one over O plus one over I. Now this here is a concave mirror, therefore F is positive. So when I substitute the values in here, I put a plus one for that focal distance. Equals to one over O. O is always positive, one over three plus one over I. So now you simply gotta be careful here, just rearrange this equation. So you're gonna get one over I is equal to, instead of writing one over one, let me just write as that as three over three minus one over three. I'm gonna be left with two thirds. So at the end, I have to take the inverse of that. The image for this guy is going to be three over two. Notice what I get. I actually get a positive value for I. Positive value means that the image is in front of the mirror. That was our convention. What else? If it's in front of the mirror, that automatically tells me that this here has to be a, a real image. Cannot be virtual. What else do I know? Well, the next thing I can do now is I can calculate what the magnification is. M, the magnification is simply minus I over O. Substitute the values in there, you're gonna get minus I is three over two, divided by O, O is three. My magnification is simply equals to minus one half. So there are two things that come out of this equation. First of all, the fact that it's negative Negative tells me that the image is also going to be inverted. But I kind of already knew that because real images are always inverted. They always go hand in hand. Now the fact that the magnitude is simply one half, so if I write this as the magnitude of M equals to one half, that tells me that the object is smaller or sorry, the image rather is smaller than the object. So if I want to find what the height of the image is, it's simply the magnification factor, M, and simply the magnitude, we already know it's inverted, multiplied by the height of the object. So in this case, it's simply gonna be one half multiplied by two. The image height is only gonna be one meter. So this is what it would look like now. So the position would be uh, three over two, that's 1.5 meters. Let's erase that three for a second. All right, so it's gonna be approximately right at the midpoint here. 
And the other thing, let's try to draw this. All right, and now the height, the height of this guy, do it a different color. The height of this guy would simply be one meter. And again, that distance, this distance from the image to the lens or to the mirror is simply 1.5 meters. So that's an example of how you use both of these equations to describe an image and to do a calculation. Let's do one more case. All right, let's do a similar case to the previous one, except this time I'm gonna stand, again, the same distance, but this time I'm standing in front of a convex mirror. Where is the image? Let's describe the image. Now for this one, remember, the focal point is behind the mirror, and the focal distance is going to be, well, the magnitude is one meter, but you gotta remember now, when we substitute inside our equation, one over F equals one over O plus one over I. Since we're dealing with a convex mirror, we need to put in a negative value over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's calculate where the image is located. So again, notice I put the negative sign over here. That's what we do for convex mirrors. Now for O, I always put a positive value in there. And now you can see that I'm simply gonna solve for one over I. So let's write down this next equation. One over I simply equals to minus one, that's one minus one over one. Now look what happens. When I bring this term on the other side, minus one over three. And this is why, I mean, this equation is rather important actually. This is why you see that whenever you have a convex mirror, the value that you're gonna get for i is always going to be negative. Because the one over o term is positive, but so when you bring it on the other side, it becomes negative. And then our focal distance is negative. Therefore, both of those terms are always negative for convex mirrors. So, I'm gonna do a little bit of math. So what do we get? We get minus three over three, minus one over three, gives me minus four over three, and that's the value for one over i, which means at the end of the day that i has to be equal to minus three over four. Notice that it is negative, and the convention for negative is that it is behind the mirror. So the first thing we could say is the position is minus three over four meters, this is behind the mirror. If the image is behind the mirror, we automatically know that this image here has to be a virtual image. There is no light that actually goes behind the mirror. Now, what else can we calculate? We can look at the magnification. So the magnification for this term is simply m. It's always the same equation, minus i over o. Now we substitute our values. Our I value is minus three over four and divided by O. O is three meters. Now you can cancel out the threes. You can cancel out the negatives. And what I'm left with now is one over four. Now the fact that M is a positive value, I could have guessed that initially because it's a virtual images. And virtual image always has a positive magnification. So that means that the image is upright. And the last thing, if I initially had a height of two meters, that means that the height of the image is going to be the magnification factor multiplied by the height of the object. In this case, it's gonna be one fourth multiplied by two. So there's gonna be a height of one half. So considerably smaller, right? And if I look now at the position, the position is minus three over four. Let's go ahead and draw where I'm gonna be located. If this is one meter, it looks like I'm approximately gonna be right here. And I'm gonna be pretty short. <laughs> I'm only half a meter. That's this height over here. Height of the image is one half. All right, so there's an example of how you use the equations for a convex mirror. Hope that helped. Consider subscribing to my channel, like the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment or send me an email. Thanks for visiting.